uh, some new stories from Ethiopia and neighboring countries. Because firstly, Israel has decided to allow uh, 3,000 Ethiopian Jews to immigrate to Israel. And this uh, decision was taken after uh, some uh, exchange of hot words during a session of uh, Israeli uh, parliament. Secondly, were uh, attacks on Kenyan soldiers who are part of EMISOM, African Union's peacekeeping mission in Somalia, have intensified. EMISOM's mandate is about to end, uh, I think. Uh, uh, 31st of March is the last day of MSOM's mandate in Somalia. Before that, attacks on Kenyan soldiers have intensified. Uh, around 10 uh, soldiers have been killed in the past two to three days. Third viewers, uh, Ethiopia has appointed some new ambassadors uh, in the US, in uh, Kenya, and in Egypt. Ethiopia has appointed new ambassadors. Who are these new ambassadors? Fourthly, uh, China is busy in the Horn of Africa. A Chinese special envoy was in Somalia today. He was in Eritrea three days ago. Then he visited Ethiopia. Now he is in Somalia. And lastly, we are sir. Uh, Abdul Fatal Burhan, Sudanese Army Chief, Head of Sudan Sovereignty Council, is in Uganda. Just an hour ago, he landed in Uganda. What is the purpose of this visit? Uh, we know that Uganda, a few months ago, offered to consider asylum request of Omar al-Bashir, former ruler of Sudan who is wanted for a trial at International Criminal Court. Firstly, viewers, uh, uh, Israel has decided to allow 3,000 Ethiopian Jews uh, to immigrate to Israel. The decision uh, has come after uh, heated discussions uh, at the parliament. Reportedly, Naftali Bennett, Israeli Prime Minister, presented a proposal for immigration of thousands, tens of thousands of Jews from Ukraine and Russia. From Russia and Ukraine, Jews are fleeing. They are trying to enter Israel. Israel has a special law, viewers. It's called Law of Return. Under this law, Jews from all over the world, they can return to Israel. So, Israel uh, accepts them. So, from Ukraine and from uh, Russia, Jews are returning and Israel is allowing them to immigrate to Israel. Proposal was submitted uh, during a meeting of uh, Israeli parliament. Uh, this proposal... Uh, uh, was meant to allow around uh, 30 to 50,000 Jews from Russia and Ukraine. This proposal was opposed by a minister who is of Ethiopian descent. She is a lady. Her name is uh, Panina uh, Tamano Shata. She is Minister of Immigration and Absorption. She said, why are whites being preferred to blacks? Why is that Ethiopian Jews are not being allowed to immigrate to uh, Israel? Their case has been pending for months. And certainly Jews from uh, uh, Russia and Ukraine are being allowed. She said uh, that uh, this is hypocrisy of white people. Her comments sparked uh, criticism. She was told to apologize and withdraw her comments. But she refused to withdraw her comments. Now, Israeli government has decided to allow uh, Jews from Ethiopia to immigrate to Israel. 3,000 are being allowed in the first phase. Around uh, 10,000 Jews reportedly live near Addis Ababa who will immigrate to Israel in the coming uh, months. Second, at least 10 Kenyan soldiers have been killed in attacks uh, from armed groups uh, in Somalia. 
The Canadian soldiers are part of EMISOM. EMISOM is uh, African Union's peacekeeping mission in Somalia. This mission has been in operation since 2007. Uh, Somalia has been accusing Kenyan soldiers who are part of MSOM of being involved in creating political conflicts in Somalia. They are being accused of uh, being involved in smuggling as well. Now attacks have intensified on Kenyan soldiers right before the end of MSOM's mandate. MSOM's mandate is due to end on the 31st of March, so just a few days away. Uh, from uh, the end of MSOM's mandate. Nine uh, Kenyan soldiers were killed uh, in Gado and one uh, close to Kenya-Somalia border. Uh, attacks were reportedly carried out by uh, armed groups, uh, Al-Shabaab fighters. Al-Shabaab is a threat to Somalia, Kenya and Ethiopia. Three countries have been jointly fighting this armed group for years. Despite joint security operations, despite uh, the operation of MSOM, Al-Shabaab is still there. It has heavy presence in several parts of uh, Somalia. We have seen attacks from Al-Shabaab fighters even in Mogadishu, Somali uh, uh, capital. Somalia wants an end to uh, MSOM's mandate. It wants its forces to take over uh, security of the country. Can Somali forces manage the security situation of the country? That remains to be seen. MSOM is about to end at the end of this month. Thirdly, Ethiopia has uh, appointed some new ambassadors to three countries, Kenya, Egypt, and US. General Bacha Dable has been appointed as ambassador to Kenya. He played a key role. He was one of the most well-known ENDF generals when fighting was going on in uh, Tigray. Then certainly we heard that he was uh, being appointed as an ambassador. He is being sent to Kenya. General Hassan, another general who remained appointed in BG mostly, by Nishangal Gumayan of Ethiopia. He is being appointed as ambassador to uh, Egypt. And Dr. Selashi, engineer Selashi, who played uh, his part in negotiations uh, uh, about GERD, uh, Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, He's being appointed ambassador to the U.S. He will replace Fitsum Araga. So three new appointments of Ethiopian ambassadors. Fourthly, viewers, uh, China has appointed a special envoy to the Horn of Africa, Zui Bing. We saw him in uh, Eriti, I think, four to five days ago. Then he visited Ethiopia. He met with Demake McConnell, deputy prime minister here. And now he is in Somalia. Today he held a meeting with Roble, PM Roble of Somalia. China is planning uh, a conference on the Horn of Africa about security and economy. In coming days, uh, we could see uh, this uh, conference. Before that, Chinese uh, special envoy is meeting all the leaders uh, in the Horn of Africa. And lastly, viewers, Abdul Fadal Burhan, Sudanese army chief, is in Uganda. Just an hour ago, he landed there. Sudan Uganda relations have gone through several ups and downs. Both countries have been backing armed groups in the other country. Like uh, Uganda was accused of backing SPLA, Sudan's People's Liberation Army, uh, which fought against Sudanese forces for years. Then in 2011, uh, Sudan was split into Sudan and South Sudan. And reportedly, uh, Sudan was backing uh, a group in Uganda as well, LRA, Lord's Resistance Army, an armed group fighting in Uganda had the backing of Sudanese uh, government of Um al-Bashir. So Sudan-Uganda relations uh, remained very strained, especially before the split of Sudan. 
Now gradually uh, they have improved the relations and last uh, year I think, yes last year uh, very most Sevenis Ugandan government offered to consider asylum application of Umar al-Bashir. Umar al-Bashir, a former ruler of Sudan, uh, is to stand trial on genocide charges at ICC, International Criminal Court. And uh, we have heard uh, a statement from a Sudanese uh, government a few months ago that he would be handed over to ICC to stand the trial. Uh, but Uganda is offering to consider his asylum application. Why is Abdul Fatal Burhan in Uganda? Is this visit linked to uh, uh, some economic issues, border issues? South Sudan shares border with Uganda, not, not Sudan. Uh, or is it, is it due to the case of uh, Omar al-Bashir, former ruler of uh, Sudan who is wanted for a trial at ICC. I'll update you in coming videos.